What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to create a custom hook. It's pretty common to fetch data when a user visits a page. And the logic we might use when fetching that data is also common. It can take up a lot of space in our component and we'll probably repeat it in other components. These are all good reasons to create a custom hook. We can outsource that logic into a separate file where we have a function, which is our hook, that handles that logic and just returns what we need. So I'm fetching data right in this component. I have use state for the quote, which is the data that I'm fetching, uh, and the loading state, and the error. Then I have a use effect hook where I'm executing the code. I'm using Axios to hit the URL to fetch the data. And then I have a cancel token, which I use in the cleanup function of the use effect to cancel any requests that we don't need anymore. And I'm using a set timeout just to deliberately show loading for more than a very split second, just kind of for this video. And then I have, I check for the loading state or quote or error. And if there is one, I will display that. If we take a look at the application here, to hell with circumstances, I create opportunities. It's deep. So this is a lot of code and we can move this to a separate file. So let's create our own custom hook and move most of this code into that hook. So I'll come over here and create another file called use fetch. It's common practice to start the custom hook with the word use. That way React knows that it is a hook and will treat it as such. And then in that file, we'll go ahead and move all of this for now. We won't need the app CSS there. Let me finish off this uh, curly brace. We'll change that to use fetch, the name of our hook. And we'll be passing in a URL because we can use this in other components and send in other URLs. So I'm gonna cut this out and then we'll just be sending in the URL there use that argument and then I'll export default use fetch and we have quote and set quote but we want to make this more versatile so we'll go ahead and change that to data and set data if I do command D, I'll select the other ones there and I'll do set data. And then since we're passing this URL in, we'll put that in the dependency array because we only want to execute this if the URL changes. And then if you know what kind of responses you might get, you can check for different kinds. If you know you're sending in different URLs and getting different responses, like our data lies in this response.data.content. So we can do response.data.content and check for that. And if it is, we'll set it. But if you know of another kind, like say response.content, you can check just for that one. And if it's there, set data to response response.content. And then lastly, this is the function, which is our hook. And we want to return the stuff we need. And we'll return it in an object so that we can use object destructuring. That way, when we're getting it out of the hook inside the component that we're using, the order that we extract them doesn't matter. And we can change the name if we need to. I'll show you that in a second. But anyways, we're going to return data, the loading, and error. So this is our custom hook, looks pretty good. 
And now back in this component, we can get rid of all of this and all of this and just import our use fetch from use fetch file. And then we'll do a const, we're gonna do object destructuring and we're getting the data, the loading and the error from our hook, which is use fetch. And then we'll pass in that URL. And then we can rename that data in this component to quote. So if we save that, I allow my intuition to lead my path. It's really deep stuff here. Just make sure you like and subscribe. <laughs> so custom hooks are very useful. They can help declutter your code and keep it dry and not repeat yourself. And you can really clean up your components. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Check it, check it.